Hello, I'm Stephanie from Deliberately Creative, and I am here to share with you my hashtag love winter art project. This is part of the Creative Arts Collaboration, December 9th through the 13th. And I'm going to be doing this really cute snowman here. He's going to be inside of a snow globe on a six inch gallery wrapped canvas. I hope you stick around to do this painting and do something creative. Thanks for coming to paint with me. So we're starting out by tracing the drawing again with a dark blue watercolor pencil so you'll be able to see it. I used a roll of tape to get the outer edge of the snow globe and now I'm just sketching in with the pencil to the inside edge of the snow globe. That will give us the area where we'll be painting the actual reflection of the outside edge. So to sketch in the base, I'm just following the curve of the bottom of the ball to make it look like it's actually setting in the base. The rest of it, it's all up to you. You could make this all squared off. You could make it a different uh, shape. You just need to have that space for the globe to set down in. Then I just drew the lines at the back uh, to give us the horizon. I wanted it to make like, it look like the ball on its base was sitting up higher. So the horizon line is down below the edge of the ball. Now I'm mixing some of the uh, paints to mimic the background. It's the titanium white, phthalo blue with just a touch of the cadmium yellow medium. It makes a pretty wintry bluey color. There's more white to it than there was on the original background. And I'm fine with that because I like to have some dimension and depth to the background. So these colors that I'm using are Liquitex Heavy Body Paints. And the whole palette is the Cad Yellow Medium, Cadmium Red Medium, Thalo Blue, Titanium White, Burnt Sienna, and Burnt Umber. I like to use a pretty limited palette because I like mixing my colors. So now I am just finishing painting the background and I'm going to let it dry while I start drawing in the actual scene on the inside of the snow globe. I am drawing a horizon line that follows the curve of the inside so that there's a place where the snow is sitting and that gives a place for our snowman, who is just three circles stacked on top of each other with some twiggy arms and a little stovepipe hat. The tree is probably getting drawn in more than I needed to since I'm going to be painting it and making it up as I go along anyway. I probably didn't need to even draw in that much. I'm not putting the features in on the snowman until after I have painted his body. So I'm going to start here with the burnt sienna and some cadmium red mixed with it to do the underpainting of the base. And if you notice, there's some dark lines showing up. I haven't added anything dark. That's just the blue watercolor pencil reacting to the wet acrylic paint. And I like it because it is bringing forward those lines that I drew and giving me that land, li land lines on where I'm going to be painting my shadows anyway. So it doesn't really matter, but it's kind of nice to have those lines there still. That was a happy accident. It wasn't something that I planned. 
And now the tree is going to be painted in. And I'm using about a half inch angle brush to do the main blocking in on this tree, which probably is a little bit too big, but I go back and fix some of the extra thickness that happens. I do change to other brushes. I'll change down to about an eighth inch bright, and then I'll be using a zero liner brush to draw to draw in with the brush more of the details. There I am showing you the eighth inch bright and I'm just going to keep working in branches and more branches and then it's going to get way too thick and some of these branches are getting really heavy and close together. So I will be working back with the liner brush and background color after the tree is dry to bring forward some of that blue sky, lighten up the tree where it's getting awfully Halloween town there in the middle. I do need to thicken up the right side branch uh, where it's going off to the from the base of the, the trunk. It needs to be thicker because I've gotten too thick out in the middle of the branch. And if this were a real tree, that branch would break off. Or it probably wouldn't even have grown that way. It's just the way it is. But I'm still working in those thinner branches. And I have been picking up the burnt sienna and the burnt umber and mixing them together. And sometimes just picking up one or picking up the other and varying the color on the tree. It's very difficult to see that from this angle I'm, I'm noticing. But... I will pick up and show this canvas later. So now I'm going to be showing you the size of this actual brush. There's probably only about 50 hairs in this thing. The bristles are about an inch long. I've cleaned my brush now and I'm going to start using the blue background color that I'm mixing up here to lighten up the tree, to open up the branches and let the light shine through. It really got to be Halloween town here, so I wanted to get it lightened up. I'm going to open up that center trunk and uh, just make it a more friendly tree, something that you could see a bird sitting in and not have it be like a vulture or something. I really do enjoy painting trees, even though I've only been doing this for a little while. It looks kind of funny right now, but I've left room to put snow into the branches and it will come together as every painter knows, there's an ugly stage, and this tree is rather ugly right at the moment. It will come together, though, and look nice and wintry. So now I'm starting to put some of that snow in, and I'm not using straight white. I am actually mixing that white with some of the phthalo blue. It gives the illusion of some shadow in the snow when it's not bright white. And if you look at snow out in real life, it's reflective. It's reflecting the colors that are around it. It's not really 
white. So I'm also taking some of that grayed, grayed out white, blued out white, and drawing it in on the actual trunk of the tree to mimic some of the bark and give it a little more dimension. I've now picked up the, it's either the eighth inch or the three, actually that's the three eighth inch wide bright and I'm just laying the snow in. The snow again is being laid in with the blued out white and I'm actually adding more blue to it. It makes it cold and frosty looking and it feels more like snow than pure white does. So I'm just working on filling in the snow, getting it right up around the base of the tree, around the base of the snowman. I'll come back in and bring in some of the titanium white with even more phthalo blue in it to give the illusion of the shadows. And I just work it in. Now I'm going to pick up my angle brush and I'm going to practice real quick how I'm going to draw the circle in. And then I realize that I had a little bit of the brown still left in my brush from earlier. I'm going to work with it. It's just going to gray out my white even more, which is the white, the mud left in my brush, and a little bit of phthalo blue. And this is going to be used to make the outside reflection. And it works. It's nice to have the variation in the color. It's not a pure white and it makes it seem a little more real when the whole thing is finished. But now I have my boundary to the outside world. And I'm showing how it fits on that canvas, how it is round, and that it's going to become more three-dimensional feeling in the globe after everything is painted in on the inside and I do the big reflections. Now the snowman still isn't white. He's being made with that same color that I used to draw the reflection on the outside. Then I will go and mix up a bricky, bluey, blacky color and try doing the tabletop. And I end up not being happy with the color eventually, and it will change one more time in this video. And then it changed again after I stopped the camera and was finished because I wasn't finished. I needed to make it better. So at the very end, I will have a picture of the final, final painting. And it's also going to be used as the uh, thumbnail for this video. I hope you remember to go and check out other people doing the hashtag love winter art uh, projects. There's going to be so many people doing this. It's going on between December 9th and December 13th, 2015. So if you're watching this in the future, remember to go look for the hashtag Love Winter Art. And people will be leaving these up forever. It's going to be very cool. All right, so I have finished painting that base uh, coat on the table. That's what I'm calling it, the base coat. 
Now I will go in and start making a black color. Sorry about my head right there. Um, I made a black using Thalo Blue, the Burnt Umber, and a little Cad Red just to get a nice blacky color. I didn't put any black on my palette because I knew that I only had a couple spots that needed anything that was black-ish. And that's going to be the hat, the eyes, and the buttons. Then his arms are being done mostly with the uh, burnt umber and a little bit of burnt sienna. Just twiggly. Dropping in a little bit of snow, but again, it's not a bright white. It's mixed down with a little bit of the blue. I'm showing you the tiny little crafter's filbert paintbrush that I have. I don't know what the brand is. Painting it, using it to paint in the eyes and the buttons. Painting a little eye to the back and a bigger eye to the front. And then the buttons down the front of the snowman. I'm using some Cad Red Medium and Cad Yellow Medium, mixing it together and making an orangey color to give a carrot nose. Then I'm going back in with the Cad Red and the Dirty Paintbrush and doing the underside of his nose. And then I'll do the same again on the top side of his nose with the cad yellow and a little and the dirty paintbrush came out pretty nice all right flicking snow is not one of my skills that i have uh, mastered yet i'm learning one of the things that i have learned is that you don't use a soft brush to hold the paint because it doesn't want to let go of the paint I whacked and I whacked and I hit that brush so hard and I painted a lot of speckles on the base and I got speckles all over the canvas and then I finally got enough on the inside of the snow globe but then I go and I try wiping everything off <laughs> and that ended up making kind of a mess. So I'll need to go in and paint the background out a little bit again. Which is good because I chose a color again ever so slightly lighter and it left a lovely ring around the outside that was just slightly darker than the highlight. It made my circle of the, of the globe stand out better. Totally didn't plan it that way, but it worked. And I am very happy with that. So now we're going to go and start working on that base some more. Getting the darks in, getting the highlights in just working the shape of it. I decided that that middle was going to be darker. It sort of pushed back inside. It gets more of the shadow. Then I will be using the same two colors and lightening it using a little bit of cad yellow. I used the cad yellow to lighten my browns instead of using the white because it doesn't make it go pastel -y. It left it wood looking instead of going flat and chalky and whitish. So that was very exciting too. This base actually starts looking really three-dimensional and uh, it makes me happy that it worked out so well. Now, on those edges, I'm working as if I was painting a three-dimensional object. I'm starting at the inside edge where it's shadowed, 
and I swoop down like C shapes. And I do that on both the top rim and the bottom rim, and it really makes it feel like it is round. Now I have put in a little bit of a shadow where the ball is sitting in the base. And I have worked up some of that color onto the actual globe because there will be a reflection of the shadow on the bottom of the glass. It makes it feel more real. And I will go in. It's not going to stay that hard and crunchy looking right there. It's, I will come back with some blue and white mixed together and work it down into the shadow and pull the shadow up a little bit. That paint is still wet and so I can move it around some. And it will make it feel more real. There you can see a little bit of the base and you can see where I'm working that paint around the bottom and then pushing it back. I've pulled it out just using the paint that was there, pulling it up the edge and back down. Now I've picked up an almost completely white, but still not completely white. And I'm dry brushing my highlights in. There's some wide highlights and there's some skinny highlights and I do hit the outside edge just a little bit more to make it feel a little bit harder. Those little highlights just pull this glass ball out and makes it round and feel three-dimensional. It is so, so fun to see that magic happen. So now I will be finishing up the base and tr getting it cleaned up around the edges. I try putting in a bit of a shadow and I'm not happy with it. It's going to end up going up to the top of that edge right there, the edge of the back of the table. And by the time I'm done putting that in, the base feels like it's disappearing. So I go back and work on lightening it up and then I decide I'm going to remove it. And I will go back in with my titanium white and thalo blue and then just take it all back to blue. And that will be the color that it will end up being at the end of this video this blue and white, uh, sort of snowy bluey white. It's a little bit different than the background, which it needs to be, but it's not different enough. So after I'm all done, because it will look good, it's just not the way I wanted it, I will paint the bottom with almost a not a hundred percent phthalo blue, but it will be a, a higher percentage of phthalo blue and it will definitely look blue and a different color than the background. It's kind of fun watching this being done in the fast motion uh, fast forward like this because it just sort of magically changes. I do have the full two hours, yeah, two hours recorded, and I will put it up as a separate video. It will be available. You, you'll be able to click on the, I believe I'll put an annotation, a card on here so that you can just click on it. If you wanted to see the whole thing brush stroke by brush stroke 
and hear me jammering on about this and that and whatever because I pretty much talk through the whole thing. There's no background music. It's just me. And then you'll really get to see how I am not a professional. I try really hard, but I'm not there quite yet. But I would really appreciate it if you would click like and subscribe to my channel. Please leave me a comment. Tell me what I did right. And, you know, if you saw something that really needed to be done differently, let me know that too. I want to get better for you. Don't forget, get out there and do something creative.